in this video I'm going to be changing the rear brake pads on my wife's 2012 Chrysler Town & Country so stay tuned. Hey thanks so much for checking out this video if you're new on this channel my name is Jeff I do all sorts of different types of home maintenance tech reviews as well as auto maintenance including today changing the rear brake pads on my wife's vehicle and uh, I'll show you guys the process of what I'm going to do and I also want to let you guys know that all the stuff that I'm using I'm going to link down in the description below so you can take a look at that as well so first I'm going to remove the tire and I'm going to loosen the lug nuts first not fully take them off but just get them loose before jacking the car up because a lot of times those lug nuts are going to be on pretty tight and there's going to be a lot of shaking of the minivan uh, while I'm trying to get the tire off uh, in the beginning here and I'd much rather uh, be putting all the force and shaking the vehicle around while it's still on the ground before it's completely jacked up. My wife's car actually has one of these locks on it and one of the lug nuts actually has a special lug nut lock on it so that somebody can't steal the tires and there was a piece that came with uh, our vehicle when we bought it so you want to check your vehicle if it's got a wheel lock on it you'll want to find that you're going to need that before you're going to be able to get the tire off. Okay with the lug nuts loosened I'm going to jack the car up. I would recommend in addition to using your jack to keep the car up to use a jack stand as an extra safety precaution just in case your jack fails or something you've got a backup that's going to keep the car from coming down. So a quick tip if you are working on a vehicle and it's been a long time since you've rotated tires or done anything like that you're trying to take the tire off and the thing is stuck you got all the lug nuts unscrewed and the tires still not coming off get yourself a piece of wood I got this one here which is pretty sturdy rubber mallet you're gonna put this behind the tire I don't need to do this because mine was loose but I've had this problem and I know you might run into this problem as well take this and your rubber hammer put it behind and and start pounding against the back of the bottom of the tire and eventually it should come loose and that should get it off so we're looking at the assembly here for the brakes and let me just run through this with you guys you have your rotor here which is this disc this is your caliper and we're actually going to take this piece off it's sitting in this bracket which is this bottom piece here and these are all held in place by these bolts your brake pads which are squeezing against your rotor are inside of your caliper here so we are gonna first remove this caliper piece so we can get at these brake pads your caliper is gonna adjust and it's got these caliper pins which kind of move back and forth and you've got your bolt right here there's one on the top and then if we slide down here there's going to be another one of these down here to get the caliper off you're going to want to remove those two bolts so i have got here a 13 millimeter wrench so we are going to be removing this caliper bolt and i'm going to fit the wrench around this bolt here you're going to find, or at least I've found, that a lot of times these things are going to be really stubborn and they are not going to be easy enough to just pull off. So you're going to need a little bit more force. I've got a breaker bar, which this is just a metal pipe, and if you don't have one of these, you could probably try and go to the hardware store, get yourself a metal pipe. This one's about a foot and a half long. It's got to be able to fit over your wrench. And with it fitting over the wrench, this is giving you like a longer arm. It's going to make it easier to pry the bolt off. Uh, we're going to fit this in here, set it on my bolt, and then which direction do you go? So if you've ever heard lefty loosey, righty tighty, think of it as if you're on the inside here looking at the bolt. We're going to go to the left to loosen it up here, and I'm going to use this bar to give me a little bit more leverage to be able to break the uh, seal that's on that bolt and then once I've got it loosened I can get rid of this bar and I should be able to crank the rest of it with my wrench here. Now if it's really being stubborn and you still can't get the thing apart you can go get yourself some uh, multi-use penetrating lubricant spray a bunch of this on that bolt let it sit for a couple of minutes and then if you try again and I would uh, imagine that that's going to 
get that loose. So we've loosened the top bolt, now I'm gonna do the bottom bolt. So as I'm trying to loosen this caliper bolt here, I'm turning it, but it's not really unscrewing because it's turning with this piece that's on the front here. So I've got some channel locks and I'm going to hold this piece in place while I'm continuing to unscrew the bolt and that will allow the bolt to actually keep unscrewing. So I've got to loosen off where I can pull the bolt out and then I'm pulling the caliper off. I was able to get it part of the way off. If you need to take a hammer and start pounding on the caliper to pound it up, you're gonna to wanna to get it loose from the bracket. Here, this is your brake line that's coming in to your caliper and you wanna make sure that when we remove this caliper piece, you're not gonna pull or uh, stretch this brake line out too much here to damage it, but we are gonna to wanna to move this caliper out of the way so we can get access to the brake pads. So you are gonna need some sort of coat hanger that has been undone or even a bungee cord's gonna work. You could probably even use rope, but I'm going to use this to hang the caliper up and away from the brake pads so I can get access to them and get them out. So for right now, I was able to tie the caliper up. It's off to the side and we have access to our brake pads. So I got my brake pads, my inside one and my outside one and I'm gonna take these out, probably easiest, I'm just gonna take a hammer and my screwdriver and just try and start lightly tapping to pry those guys out. Since we have the brake pads off, this is a good time to also make sure that our caliper pins are well lubricated. So these uh, caliper pins are moving pretty freely. Yours might not be, they might have seized up uh, and they, you might push on them and they might not go anywhere. But we're gonna wanna remove these pins and we are gonna add some uh, lubricant to them and then put them back to help ensure that they're gonna keep moving smoothly. Real quick, if you are noticing that your caliper pin here is seized up so it's not freely moving, uh, you're gonna wanna take that out, get yourself a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and you are going to just gently start tapping and pressing on that pin until you can free it up from that boot. You want to make sure you don't damage this boot on either side. So I have a paper clip that I actually bent just using some grips here to kind of get a little curve on it, which is nice to get underneath the boot. And I was able to pry away the rubber on the boot there as I go around on the caliper pin and then that allowed me to freely remove the caliper pin. You can get some of this Ultra Brake Parts Lubricant, and I'm just gonna put a little bit more on there to make sure that this guy is good and then put it back in. So I'm gonna wipe off the caliper pin and we are gonna reapply some new paste to that. Ooh, this stuff smells amazing. I'm going to reinsert my newly lubricated caliper pin. Pop that in there and I want to make sure that that rubber boot goes all the way to the top of that caliper pin there so that it reseals to keep any gook out of there. If you've got a seized up caliper pin, uh, if, if it's all rusted on the inside, you may need to replace it with a different caliper pin, but go ahead and lube it up, put it back in there and that's gonna keep your caliper freely moving to ensure even wear of your brake pads. I'm gonna repeat this process for the bottom pin as well. So when you are looking to replace your brake pads, I usually buy the premium ceramic brake pads. I think they are quieter. I haven't experienced squeaking or anything with them and I've been using them for as long as I've been changing brakes and I really like them. So real quickly, I want to show you guys, this is the old brake pad and here's the new brake pad uh, that we're going to be replacing the old one with. And hopefully you can see here, there's, there's very little pad left on this old one and all the meat that is on this new one here. Um, it was definitely time to be changing these brakes. If I would have waited much longer, the little bit of pad that's left on here uh, would have completely worn away and then the metal from this the back of this brake pad is going to start scraping into my rotor 
which is not good. So we are gonna replace with these new, much fatter brake pads. So for now, I'm gonna choose to save this existing rotor. It's gonna be a little bit of a cheaper brake job change for me. And I guess a lot of times, a lot of people are gonna recommend if you're changing the pads, change the rotors as well. Uh, for today's video, I'm not going to change the rotors, but uh, I'm gonna clean them a little bit. And if you wanna do the same, you can get some of the, uh, you can get some of this brake cleaner and uh, I'm gonna spray that on there and wipe this rotor down to make it look a little nicer. So in my opinion, as far as replacing the rotors and cleaning this guy up, I don't think this looks too bad. There's not really any significant grooves in this rotor. Uh, the grooves would be caused if, if the uh, brake pads went all the way down to metal and then you're gonna start having those dig right into your rotor Then I would say your rotor shot and you need to get some new rotors anyway Because you put new pads on and all the grooves in your rotor are just gonna rip through your new brake pads even faster But I'm gonna try and reuse this rotor for the next round here with the brake pads uh, And we'll go from there. So your brake pads sit in these clips which are in the bracket and My brake pads came with some new clips and I'd recommend uh, replacing them so I'm gonna pop this guy out and put the new one in and I have a little bit of this aluminum anti-seize lubricant and I would just, uh, what I usually do is I put just a little bit inside this clip where the brake pad's gonna touch the inside of the clip. I don't use very much, but just enough to uh, keep the brake pad sliding nicely. I've also got a wire brush and if you've got rust anywhere on your brackets and stuff, you can use your wire brush just to get in there to kind of clean some of that off. I've done another video where I've changed the brakes on a 2012 Dodge Caravan which is very similar, almost exact to this uh, replacement here on this Chrysler, Chrysler and Dodge made by the same company. Uh, you can take a look at that video. I'll put a link in the description here, but I did a full brake change uh, on the rears and the fronts showing the pads as well as changing the rotors. So we're gonna put our new fatter brake pads on and these guys have a lot of meat on them. The older pads were much thinner and we have this piston that is inside of our caliper and it's going to get pushed out the thinner your brake pads are. Uh, we're putting fatter brake pads on, so we need to compress this piston back into the caliper. Uh, in order to do that, um, what I've just found, I've made the investment in, uh, is you can get one of these universal uh, caliper windback kits, and I don't know, I, I wanna say it's somewhere around 50 bucks um, online, and once you buy it, I mean, it's it's got all the different pieces that are gonna fit in different vehicles. Uh, and I've just found this makes things a lot easier for trying to crank back the pistons. If you think you might be doing more brake jobs in the future, uh, it, I think it's worth making the investment in it. So here's what's nice about the wind back kit. You find the spacer piece that you need, you put your plate on, and then you slide this into your caliper. You line up the holes with the, with the uh, spokes there, and then you're gonna go ahead and tighten this up so it's resting on the caliper. And once you've got a good, uh, once you've got a good lock, then you can start turning. Hold on to your caliper, but start turning the wind back kit to start winding back the piston. So, and as I'm doing this, I am actually turning the piston clockwise. If I'm if I'm looking at it, I am turning it clockwise to compress it. So I've got that piston all the way back. I want to line up. Uh, I want to line up those grooves so that they're up and down. So I'm going to be putting my new brake pads in, and you want to make sure that you are putting them in the, the same way that you took the other ones out. So save your old ones and make sure you keep track of where these little metal pieces are sticking out. And. Uh, you want to make sure you're putting your new brake pads in that same way. So I am having problems fitting this brake pad into here. It's hard for me to see over uh, the 
side of this rotor so I'm actually going to take this bracket off and see if it makes it easier for me to get this in so I am going to loosen those two 18 millimeter bolts So now I'm able to see a little bit easier getting this brake pad into this bracket. If it's easier for you to take that off, go ahead and take it off. So for your caliper bracket bolts as well as the bolts you're going to put into the pins for the caliper, I use a little bit of this thread locker blue and you want to just apply a little bit of it onto the bolt. This is going to help keep the bolts from coming loose with all the vibrations that are going to be happening with your vehicle. All right, I'm going to make sure my brick pads are pushed up against my rotor. We've compressed our piston, so now we are going to put our caliper back over our brake pads. So before I attach the caliper onto the brake pads, I'm just going to apply a little bit of this anti-seize lubricant. And I'm putting this on the brake pads, essentially where the caliper is going to be touching it, uh, trying to avoid sticking and just trying to make it a little bit easier uh, to have the pad uh, move inside the caliper. I'm being careful not to get any of this anti-seize lubricant on the pad uh, itself, which is touching the rotor, just on the back. Find my caliper bolts. We're gonna put those guys back in. So before I put the tire back on, I am gonna add a little bit of this anti-seize uh, lubricant to the spots where I'm going to be screwing back on the lug nuts just to prevent it from having the lug nuts rust on and hopefully have an easy time getting those back off again when I need to either do a tire rotation or work on brakes again. So with everything all lubed up and ready to go, let's throw the tire back on and I'm going to jack the car down. Got my torque wrench twisted so that it's right at that 100 foot-pounds and I am going to ensure that these guys are all tightened up. I'm going to do exactly what I did on this side to the other side of the car. When I am fully done changing the brakes, both tires are on and I'm ready to drive, I'm going to get in the driver's seat and pump the brake pedal probably five or six times and what I'm doing is tightening up the system. You'll, you'll feel the brake pedal go from being loose to uh, getting tighter as you're pumping the brakes. Um, once the brakes are tightened up, I'll start the vehicle up and I'll pull out of my driveway and all the while, probably every 10 feet or so, I'm pumping the brakes to make sure that I'm able to stop and everything's working. And then I'll go down a side street, again, going very slow, just a couple of miles per hour and probably every 50 to 100 feet I'm going to keep tapping on those brakes, making sure everything's tightened up and that I'm, I'm able to stop and then I'll gradually go around the block a little bit and increase my speeds again, always checking the brake pedal uh, to make sure I'm stopping very good to ensure that everything is ready to go before I go at higher speeds out on some of the more main roads. So I hope you found the information in this video helpful. Once again, I'm going to leave links down in the description below to all the different tools that I used and materials that I used. Uh, trying to make things as easy as possible for you if you've never changed your brakes before. Uh, if it's something that you're thinking about doing, I would encourage you to try it. There's nothing more gratifying to me than being able to do my own maintenance, both in my house as well as on my vehicles. And I've also done a ton of other videos on this channel, uh, installing things like ceiling fans, electrical inside, uh, and other maintenance like changing air filters uh, in, in all of our vehicles here as well. So I'd encourage you guys to, uh, if this video is helpful, smash that like button. And if you subscribe to our channel, hit that little notification bell. You'll never miss any of our future videos. My name is Jeff. Thanks so much for watching uh, here on Tinker Forward. As always, be sure to make every day awesome, and I will see you guys in the next video.